Well, everybody, hey, welcome to Tuesday. It is uh, June 18th. Hope uh, everybody had a great Father's Day weekend as we head into this week of June. Uh, really towards the end of earnings season, not a lot out there to talk about on earnings front. But we do have some economic numbers that have come out. We'll talk about those and more when Dave joins us here in just a few seconds. Before we do that, though, let's not forget that there are so many things that you and I, we have no control over. However, you can take control of your investment portfolio by knowing the amount of risk you have and knowing the amount of risk you should have and making sure those two line up properly. Give us a call at 863 382 0037 schedule your core retirement analysis that we got dave coming up next is there at 105.7 highlands light fm morning all we're at 8 40 here it's 20 before nine every morning at this time we check in and see what's going on with your money this morning on the line is Philip Statler from Statler Financial Services in downtown Seabrook. Philip, good morning. Good to hear your voice today. Hey, good morning, Dave. Glad to be back here and the seat and uh, helping you kind of digest what's happening in the marketplace today. Yeah, I didn't get a lot of indigestion to digest yesterday, although we started out the morning thinking, well, this could be a profit-taking day. We ended up... Uh, with the Dow up almost a full half a percent, up 189 points. Standard & Poor's up by three-quarters of a percent, up 42. NASDAQ up almost a full percent, up $168 yesterday. That's another new closing record for the Standard & Poor's and the NASDAQ. And the Dow is still solidly in nosebleed territory, just the... Uh, you know the blue chips ended up having a little bit more of a more of a bloody mess when we were retrenching a little bit. So, on balance, stock market looks awful darn healthy, doesn't it? Yeah, it does. I think wasn't that the the first gain the Dow's had in uh, maybe a week or so? Yeah, it's, it's been it's been soft lately. I've been kind of guessing as much as anything with expectations of a slightly slower economy, the possibility now off of the Fed minutes from last week of uh, one interest rate cut that it almost looks like we might be able to count on. It looks like we're kind of running back to the growth stocks and uh, getting a little cool on the getting a little cool on the blue chips. Yeah, it does. You know, it looks like we have at least those 30 stocks anyway, right? Uh, yeah, I, I was reading a thing, and one of the biggest problems they've got uh, on the uh, on the uh, on the Dow is that there's enough financials still on it to the point where that sector is not exactly doing great this quarter. So consequently, it's weighing the Dow down with some of the big financial enterprises that are in there, and that's not helping a bit. But uh, nevertheless, the broader market is it's going gangbusters, isn't it? It definitely seems to be, you know, especially that. Uh... You know, the NASDAQ finally getting some, uh, you know, move back up after earlier this year, kind of uh, taking a rest. Yeah, I was going to say one more decent day and we're going to be up over 18,000 on the NASDAQ. And that could be uh, one of those psychological markers. But, uh, but we were giggling about this before we went on the air because I, I the uh, big brokerage firms all tried to predict how the Standard & Poor's 500 is going to finish the year. Uh, one new planet heard from the Evercore people now are predicting, drum roll if you please, that the Standard & Poor's will end 2024 at 6,000 or above. And J.P. Morgan is still sitting out there saying we're all going to die and it's going to go down to 4,200. I'm not 100% sure I'm going to take a buy order from J.P. Morgan this year. How about you? <laughs> yeah. yeah, I'm not so sure. They're pretty pessimistic, aren't they? No. Uh, yeah, you know, I was looking at, at Goldman Sachs, and they've come out with uh -huh. four different kind of scenarios. And and I will say one of them does have one of their four um, scenarios does have the S and P back down to forty seven hundred. That's a little bit more conservative. I mean, it's bearish, but at the very least, it's within the realm of reason. We're at uh, fifty four seventy three as of this morning. Uh, forty seven hundred would be a full bear market retrenchment on the thing, but. I look at Morgan and I sit back and say, what are you people thinking? I mean, you know, at this point in time, if we fall down to 4,200, I mean, Mexico might take us over. Yeah, and, and just looking at a couple of the scenarios, another scenario they have it, the, the S&P closed the year at 5,900, and then they have another scenario where the uh, S&P 500 could actually uh, close at 6,300. So um, they're... Um, they, you know, they're, they're covering all the bases here, Dave. These people do not like talking heads like us making fun of them like we're making fun <laughs> of J.P. Morgan. Oh, we, 
We didn't say it was just that. We decided it could go anyway. It's just, in other words, nobody nobody knows for sure if the uh, if the interest rate hikes that we've had are too much and it throws us into recession. Yeah, then that forty seven hundred is probably reasonable. But at this point in time, it looks like we're heading for that proverbial soft landing. I'm not sure we need an interest rate cut yet, but the very least, the indications are we're landing softly. Retail trade this morning is about the only market moving data dump we got out of the government. They were expecting last month us to uh, spend about three-tenths of a percent more than we did before. We actually only increased our spending one-tenth of a percent more, which I'm kind of seeing that kissing your sister scenario. That should be something that the big-time investors are, would be looking at as being that soft landing indication, wouldn't you? It, it would, but I will tell you, Dave, it does have the indexes um, haven't really gone anywhere since those numbers have come up. I mean, that it went up for a little bit, but now it's trailed back down to where it was prior to that uh, number coming out. Well, after yesterday, no reaction probably wouldn't be a bad reaction to something like that, would it? No, uh, prob probably not. It's going to be interesting because I did not see the retail sales minus autos. Uh, I only saw the overall number. So if we dig down and we find that number, that might shed some light as well. Yeah, ditto. I just got the top line, and that's about it. Stocks nudged upward by weaker than forecast retail sales report is the only real headline I've got. So cross our fingers that uh, the uh, except autos end up giving us the same concern. We're still growing, just not as fast as our dream would be. Would that be a fair guesstimate? Uh, uh, that would be uh, what we would hope for anyway. Have a look at that. Oh, just tidbits that are out there this morning. Chipotle, you and I were talking about it last week. A little bit later on, Chipotle is going to be doing a uh, 50 for 1 stock split next week. Evidently, the investors like that because they're buying Chipotle at it's an obscenely high price level now, pushing the value up, which will make it. They were up 3% yesterday. What are they, a $1,500 stock or something? Uh, I don't know. They're pretty expensive, though. They're not a cheap <laughs> stock for sure. Yeah, I mean, one share of stock would be more than I've got in my wallet at the moment by a long <laughs> shot. <laughs> we don't have a lot of activity going on. It's a relatively quiet week. We're going to get some housing information yesterday or tomorrow morning, when it, rather, when the market is closed. Uh, I'm going to kind of assume this is going to be one of those uh, kind of like a Friday behaving day. If things trail down a little bit at the end of the day, it'll just be general concern, not leaving your money on the table overnight, fair guess. Uh, that can be very well the case. I mean, we did have a couple companies come out and report. Um, we can start with Lazy Boy, uh, the mm. furniture company. Uh, and so they had a really good quarter a uh, day. They, they came in at 95 cents a share versus 70 cents expected. Uh, revenue was better than expected as well. Um, and, and that has Lazy Boy up 9% nine, 9 this morning. Wow. Yeah. That, good, yeah good that's one of the heritage. That's one of the heritage brands as far as furniture is concerned as well. Glad they're doing well. Now, on the other side of the coin, we've got Lennar Homes. Uh, mm -hmm. They reported, I think KB maybe comes out later today. Uh, but Lennar Homes came out, and they, uh, they they did okay for the quarter. They, they beat on earnings and on revenue. Um, however, they um, – and they even expect the, the next quarter to do okay. But somewhere in there, somebody doesn't like what's happening there – um, in the guidance number, and so it's got uh, Lennar trading down about two, a little over two and a half percent this morning. Oh, and Lennar and KB are kind of our canaries in the coal mine with the uh, housing numbers coming out tomorrow when the stock market is closed. I got to believe that probably is going to make people nervous if they're trading down. Uh, it could, from a real estate standpoint, anyway. Absolutely. Uh, other indications we got? Do you hear any 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 rumblings out there? You know, as far as earnings, that's really it. Uh, one big thing that came across is Nextera Energy Company. Uh, yeah. they're, uh, they're, they're getting a pullback today uh, because they are going to go out and sell roughly, roughly $2 billion worth of equity units at $50 a piece. And so uh, that's putting some pressure on them this morning. I wonder whether or not IBM is suffering off of a McDonald's story that I ran across. IBM's uh, Watson Artificial Intelligence Unit was uh, being used at McDonald's drive throughs for an artificial intelligence drive through uh, yeah. McDonald's is pulling it out because it started putting bacon in the ice cream. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> just, 
McDonald says they're not giving up on artificial intelligence, but they're going to find a new AI supplier because bacon and ice cream, pregnant ladies are about the only people that would react positively to that, I suspect, <laughs> right? That's, that's funny. Resetting the table for the morning. Big up day yesterday across the board, everywhere except for the Dow, and even it was up pretty healthy yesterday. 45 minutes before we open this morning, how are we doing? Yeah, it's a mixed bag right now, Dave. The Dow is uh, down $9. The S&P 500 is flat right now, and the NASDAQ 100 is up a tenth of a percent. So nothing nothing big across the board as we head into this uh, day before a holiday. And then we've got on the commodity side, we got silver uh, down almost seven-tenths of a percent. Gold's up two-tenths, and then crude oil is below 80, Dave. It's down about two-tenths to $79.58 a barrel. Oh, that's a relief because my delayed quotes had it above 80, and I was thinking I had to gas up today. <laughs> I figured I figured they just follow what my gas tank looks at and trade the price up just in time to bump my price Just for price you, up. right? Just for me. Across the ponds, the Asian rim market generally up over the uh, evening hours. 6 a.m. close this morning on balance. The, uh, most of the market's up, up between half and full percent at the 6 a.m. close. Europe also looking all right after a relatively negative day yesterday. Overall, European index is up between, oh, between 10 and 18 percent halfway through the European trading day. So everything's coming up roses internationally so far this morning. Keeping track of a retirement plan, how do I stay on that plan? That takes some advice. Need your help, Philip. How do I find you to get that advice? Yeah, that's why I developed the core retirement design to help people design that retirement they always dreamed of. Give us a call at 863 382 0037 to schedule your core retirement design. And then join us this weekend for the Statler Financial Radio Show, 6 a.m. and noon on Saturday, 10 a.m. Sunday morning on Highlands News Talk, 7.30 a.m. and 95.3 FM. And I'm going to go out and see if I can't find some bacon-flavored ice cream, and we'll talk to you tomorrow, all right? <laughs> all right, man. Have a great one. Thank you, sir. It's 105.7 Light FM and Statler Financial Services. Philip Statler. It's night. Hey, folks, again, I want to thank you for joining us today. Have a great day and join us again tomorrow, same time. Take care. Bye now.